get some nice rum here. Bumbo Rum Company, Bumbo XO. Look, I'm not uh, happy about this either, but the reality is every once in a while, I still get stuck having to revert back to a uh, Windows dual boot that I have. Those really nice intros and thumbnails that everyone's always raving about on my channel, this is where those happen. A lot of the great high-end motion graphics software is only available on uh, Windows. So as much as I'd rather not, and as much as it is kind of annoying to have to come back and mess around on Windows when I've gotten used to the way that things work on Linux, it is a thing that happens from time to time. Uh, so my thinking here is maybe there's a few other people who also, for work or for whatever other reason, end up having to use a Windows type system. Uh, and let's try to make that a little more uh, enjoyable. Um, so mainly what I'm referring to here is, uh, ooh, that's not it, WSL, Windows Subsystem for Linux. Uh, this is a really, really cool thing that Windows has added in the last couple of years. If you're not familiar with the concept, basically you're booting uh, a Linux image uh, or, or it's basically kind of a virtual machine and you're running uh, some distribution of Linux literally alongside Windows and then you're mounting your Windows hard drive as the mounted drive in that Linux distribution and then you're able to manipulate your Windows files as if you were on Linux. So all of the command line apps that you were used to using on Linux you can now use on Windows. That great Unix style terminal and command line you're familiar with most likely you're going to be able to use on Windows. Windows, and it's just all around a way better system. Uh, so the idea here is actually really, really cool. Um, you basically can install any Linux distribution that you want, but when we go through and look at the options for Linux that we have, what do we got here? We've got, it's like OpenSUSE, Debian, Ubuntu, uh, Kali Linux, that's cool. So basically you can install any Linux distribution you want as long as it's a Ubuntu derivative, or I should say a Debian derivative. Uh, that's not ideal, I suppose. And uh, what I really would like to do is just get Arch Linux installed, and I already gave the game up here. We can install Arch Linux alongside Windows and then boot into Arch to manipulate our Linux files. And also the cool thing here is um, you're not restricted to just installing Arch or just installing Ubuntu. You can install as many instances of Linux as you want and run them alongside uh, your Windows uh, boot. So uh, what we're going to do today is try to get Arch Linux up and running on Windows and we'll see how it goes. I haven't tried this, but I'm assuming that it, it is literally an Arch Linux install for the most part. So we should be able to, of course, use Pac-Man, but also access the AUR, which is phenomenal. Uh, and then it's just Arch Linux. It's what I'm familiar using is, you know, if I have to, if I'm going to use a Linux distribution, I'd like it to be the one that I'm familiar with. So uh, I'm going to throw this off to the side. Also, just by the way, I'm I'm no fan of Windows. <laughs> Even before I used Linux, I was a Mac OS guy, mainly just because of the like privacy issues with Windows 10. I mean, I, I don't have to tell anyone about that. You know, they may or may not have a keylogger built in. All the telemetry, which I know telemetry isn't, you know, technically spying. It's anonymized, but I don't know. It's just, it's, it's hard to trust an OS like that. But uh, as far as actually technically using the operating system, they have been making some great strides recently. WSL uh, is phenomenal. The Windows subsystem, which is what we're messing with here. Um, I actually just recently went ahead and installed WinGet. Phenomenal. This is like a full on package manager for Windows, officially sanctioned by Windows. It's it's developed straight from Microsoft uh, and, and it works great. You know, if I, if I do winget list here, I've recently reinst reinstalled Windows. So every single app on my computer, other than like the Adobe suite, I know didn't work. And then um, there's also a few other weird things like this is an AI upscaling software that I'm running right here. I had to install that manually. And then Spotify, oddly enough, I had to install manually, but literally every other app on my system is being installed and maintained via this package manager. You know, I can do winget install uh, and install Firefox. You know, if I need to update window, winget upgrade dash dash all, it's nothing special to anyone who's familiar with Linux, but it's, it's cool to see this on Windows in any way that's developed by the Microsoft team. Anyways, let's go ahead and get this up and running here. As far as I know, 
the first thing that we need to do is actually just enable the WSL feature on Windows 10. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and exit the Windows terminal here. And what I need to do is either open up the command prompt or the uh, Windows terminal as an administrator. I'm just gonna search PowerShell over here and we wanna right click, run as administrator. And then we need to run the following, enable Windows, optional feature dash online dash feature name microsoft windows subsystem linux okay so do you want to restart to complete this operation now shit man i didn't know i was gonna have to restart okay yeah i guess we'll go ahead and restart here Okie dokie. So I think we're uh, good to go ahead and try to go ahead and install this uh, Arch Linux deal here. Somehow my display order got out of whack, but that's fine. What uh, we need to do is download the actual deal here. It's an exe file or a zip file. So we can click download right there on the good old GitHub page. And okay, so 208 megabytes, that's Seems about right. I think that's about the size of the uh, Arch Linux ISO. Oh, here's a question I didn't even think about. Are we gonna have to go through the Arch like installation process? Or is it just gonna like set up a user for us? I didn't even think about that. Are we gonna need to pull up the Arch Wiki here and do like a full install? I don't know. I guess we'll just find out in a second. Oh, it's done. Okay, cool. So uh, we can go and minimize that. And then what we need to do is come over to our good old downloads. Uh, and then I've got um, WinRAR here. You don't need a program to extract anymore on Windows, which is great, but you just want to extract right there. And um, yeah, so we just need to run that, at least to start with, it looks like. It opened up a, looks like a command prompt over here, and uh, it's doing something. It's installing. So we just sit around and wait, eh? I mean, if you're using Windows, you're probably used to waiting. Oh, installation complete, cool. All right, so press any key to continue. And it exits. Alrighty. Um, so what do we do now? I mean, I guess we could open up the Windows terminal. And I don't think I, I, I only really ever use. Um, I, I haven't used the WSL thing too much. Oh shit! It just put Arch right over there. So is that it? Okay. So we're in here. Is looks like a root user. Where are we? We are in mount slash c slash user slash mac, which I think is our. If we list. Oh yeah, this is our Windows directory. Cool, cool, cool. All right, so let's let's test this out here. Go over to the desktop and uh, let's CD into the desktop and let's uh, touch and say dingus. And in theory, hey, now we have a file called dingus and we can remove. Why the f is that the example that I use? Okay, there it is. That that was easy. I, I thought we would have to go through the Arch install process there. Okay, cool. So it looks like you could also just run this Arch exe file. And it would also, yeah, did the same thing. It just opened it up on this other screen. It'll open up a, a Windows deal here. Uh, I am actually kind of a fan of the Windows terminal here, so I see no reason not to use that. Uh, but this is it. We've got Windows on here now. So what do we have here? Do we have Vim? Okay, so it's it's doing some like pre-setup version of Arch. So it looks like it's gonna come with some basic tools. Let's look at what uh, we got here that it's updating. So it sent us in here with, uh, we've got Vim by default. We've got, what else we got that it gave us by default here? It looks like not too much stuff. Like I don't see a ton of bloat, which is, you know, makes sense for an Arch Linux distro. Um, that's nice. Again, I think the possibilities here are endless. Uh, we can have access to the AUR. We can use Pac-Man. If you're familiar with Arch, it seems like why not install Arch on Windows? So, hey, I uh, hope this was helpful for anyone else who may have to use uh, Windows from time to time. Sorry, I feel your pain. But uh, all I can tell you is uh, drink plenty of alcohol and uh, you'll make it through. Thanks for watching, everybody, and I'll uh, see you in the next video.